Okay, so we're adding any waste woody material that will fit in the pyrolyzer. It's got to fit all the way in, but it's no good. I thought it would. Pack it as densely as you can. Don't use bamboo that's closed on both ends or it'll explode. You can put pieces down inside bamboo. When it's full enough, you find a good solid base plate. In this case, it's a good big piece of cast iron, an old Barbie. Make a base plate, put some bricks on it. Put your outer, which is this one from the Fisher and Pikel. Now you've got to upturn this without the wood falling in, so it's why it helps to have a base plate. Let's give it up. Now that's the basis of your pyrolyzer. If you light a fire around here and the smoke comes out, it'll burn, but the air can't get back in and set your charcoal on fire, so you can save your charcoal. And now we put the shroud around the outside to hold the fire, the primary, the primary fire that's going to heat it all up. So then we'll load in some primary kindling. should get a lot of air soon, the smoke's going down. That should be all the smoke you get, just that start-up smoke. And after that, the trick to not having smoke is to keep feeding small amounts, a bit at a time, and getting plenty of air. And in this case, we've got air coming in all around the bottom, plenty of air, and a slow feed rate of fuel. Build some of the fire on top of the drum. Actually, I will put this one going so we can come back to it in a half an hour or so when it starts to pile. I can uh, watch the secondary flame start coming out. Basically it until the fire on the side of the how much water they In any minute now, the drum's going to take over and we'll use it as a secondary burn. The idea is not to have any smoke. The main point. You're going to pyrolyze to minimise greenhouse gases and capture some carbon. So you feed gently without making smoke. And make sure there's always plenty of air. Dry feed stock, slow feed rate. Dry feed stock, slow feed rate, won't be fast, and lots of air. Now according to Lou Gold, the latest blog from Terra Preta, sustainable harvest for a forest is one fortieth. Now if one fortieth filled by hand with chainsaw and truck to a place like this, it would be sustainable. You could do it continuously. Sequester carbon. So a 40th of the forest. Oh, carbon. Okay, we're underway. This is full. You could bring in and bring the camera a bit closer almost. This is what the wood that's in the drum, we're gassing off all its volatiles. And the fire below there is setting fire to it. So that'll just build now get hotter and hotter. 
have a point where you should be able to see just by coming out the bottom of the drum, in which case, at what point I will get some gloves and take that outer shroud off and we'll wash it. Just build up the fire a bit more and make sure it's hot. This is a mistake I made last time, I didn't add a bit more fuel, make sure this primary fire keeps going. The primary fire has still got to cook that gas out of the reactor. Okay, so we've got a retort over the top of that, you can channel, channel that heat out and um, set yourself a big drum over the top of it with hot water, so you can make some process heat for hot water. Or use it just for space heating for an event, just to stand around keeping warm. Now, we're going to do the bit that you don't do at home, folks. I'm going to take the outer shroud off just to show you the gas escaping. Actually, there should be one even further out up than this. So I'm going to take the outer off. Here the draft stops. Now, you can able to see around the bottom here. You can see there's, there's no fuel there. But there's gases coming out from this drum here. Mm -hmm. yep. Now I'm not sure what block you're making it, but there should be gases coming out all the way around. Mm -hmm. Fine. And the idea is that they might have almost finished. We might be finished the pile or system. They're diminishing. There's definitely some coming out the front there still too. So that's the idea. You're burning those gases. We'll go back and improve our efficiency again. Get our chimney going. And you can hear it start to draw me. Since there's still more gas coming off, I'll have to add some more wood to that primary fire just to finish it off. It's always good to overfire it. Your charcoal shouldn't smell like tar when you bring it out of the drum. So it's best to be overfired, if anything. It wouldn't hurt if you built a big fire around it and went away and left it and back in the morning as long as the drum doesn't leak air. I'm putting my head in here to smell if I can smell any volatiles still coming off. Uh, it's pretty neutral, but I think I can smell some from the back. But we'll crack it open anyway. And if it's still stinking, I'll fire it up again tomorrow. And finish it off. So, you can see where the gas has been coming out around there. There. If we take this off too early, the charcoal will catch on fire and we'll, we'll lose our load. There's an oxygen free environment in there and there's a fuel and the fuel is hot. So here we go, we'll see if it's going to catch on fire. Ah look, unpyrolyzed wood. Got to go back again. Still cool, there's a lot of bamboos pyrolyzed. Most of it's done. Just this bit here might have been wet. Well, that was only really firing for about 40 minutes. So it looks like it probably needs more like 80 to be sure that you've got it fully pyrolyzed. And what this is is called torrified wood and it usually smells. Still, it's not good enough for agricultural charcoal. Great fuel.